Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses. In this video, we'll be addressing the Jonah Knight Order and the Knights Templar. The members of the Jonah Knights claim that they alone were in the possession of the inner mysteries of Christ. The Supreme Pontiffs of the Jonah Knights assumed the title of Christ and claimed an uninterrupted transmission of power from the days of St. John. The Jonah Knights claimed to possess ancient records to the effect that when Jesus was a small child, he was adopted by a rabbi named Joseph, who carried him into Egypt where he was initiated into the occult sciences. The priest of Osiris, regarding him as the long-promised incarnation of Horus, expected by the adepts, finally consecrated him sovereign pontiff of the universal religion. At the same time of the foundation of the Order of the Temple, A.D. 1118, the Grand Pontiff of the Jonanite Order was named Theocles. He was acquainted with Hugo de Paines and initiated him into the mysteries and privileges of his church, promising him the sovereign priesthood and supreme government and finally designating him as his successor. As the Order of the Templars, Therefore, was originally formed in Syria and existed here for a considerable time, it would be no improvable supposition that they received their Masonic knowledge from the Lodges in that quarter. But we are fortunately in this case not left to conjecture, for we are expressly informed by a foreign author who was well acquainted with the history and customs of Syria that the Knights Templar were actually members of the Syriac fraternities. To understand the forces behind the Knights Templar, it is necessary to examine the doctrines of the Jonanite order of Oriental Christians. Eliphas Levi and several other authors and historians advance the belief that Hugh D. Paines had been initiated into a strange sect of Christian Jonanites then flourishing in the East. At the time of Hugh D. Paines, Theocles was the living Christ of the Jonanites. He communicated to the founders of the temple the ideas of sovereign priesthood of dedicated and initiated men united for the purpose of overthrowing the bishops of Rome and the establishment of universal civil liberty. The secret objective of the Jonanites was the restoration of the esoteric tradition and the gathering of mankind under one eternal religion of the world. The Templars, like all other secret orders and associations, had two doctrines, one concealed and one reserved for the masters, which was Jonahism, the public one, which was the Roman Catholic. Thus, from the beginning, the Knights Templar served two doctrines. One was concealed from all except the leaders and certain trusted members. The other, publicly stated and practiced for the sake of appearances, conformed with the regulations of the church. It is well to add here a few details about the Knights Templar, since they are so intimately connected with the Masonic Order. Details which will serve to show the inner aspects of their tradition. Much has been written about them and their history from one aspect. is better known than that of almost any other mystic organization. But the fact of a secret teaching is not sufficiently clear. That there was a secret doctrine amongst the Templars is shown by the name appearing on your screen. He points out the Knights considered that the Roman Church had failed in its ideal, and that when the terrible persecutions fell upon them, that they divided and joined two different associations, one of the body of Freemasons and the other the body named the Jonanites. The epic of Dante is Jonanite and Gnostic, an audacious application like that of the Apocalypse of the figures and numbers of the Kabbalah to the Christian dogmas, and a secret negation of everything absolute in these dogmas. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. And please consider donating a little to Wars of the Roses so we can continue to do this work. The links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description below. Thank you very much.